So how can I retire on a 2% yield? That's a question I receive a lot from investors after they review my portfolio. They're like, Mike, that's great. You focus on low yield, high growth stocks. You have great returns. But what if you have to retire tomorrow morning? How can you live on a 2% yielding portfolio? So in this video, I will show you how I would build my portfolio if I was going to retire today with a million dollar in my pockets and the objective of generating $50,000 per year. And of course, considering inflation moving forward. But first, let's take a look at what's the classic option, right? So imagine that you retire at 60, your house is paid off, you have a million dollar and you need to generate $50,000 in income. So the napkin calculation would be, well, that's easy. I'm going to invest a million dollar at 5%, generating $50,000 and then boom, I'm golden. Well, you're golden until you're not because there is a problem with those companies offering a 5% or more yield. Have you ever thought of, all the reasons why a company will offer you such a juicy payment year after year. It's not because that they're generous. It's because that most of the time those companies are struggling. They're mature businesses. They lack of growth vectors and they are struggling with their cash flow. Therefore, there is less demand for this type of stock on the market. The stock price doesn't go up and you have that result of a high yield. Most of the time, this is the story behind a high yielding stock. So there are two problems when you focus on those high yielding investments. The first one is inflation. Imagine that you invest in a company like Northland Power, for example. Over the past five years, Northland Power has offered a nice yield, but no dividend increase. So during those five years, your retirement income has not moved at all. While if you're living in the US, your cost of living increased by more than 20% or in Canada by more than 18%. Long story short, your filet mignon became a craft dinner meal. While it's quite common for high yielding stocks or high yielding ETFs to not increase their distribution, it could even get worse. Imagine that instead of investing in Northland Power, you actually invested in AT&T. You know, big telco, been around for years, have been a dividend aristocrat and offering such a juicy yield. Well, my friend, unfortunately, in 2022, your dividend got caught by 45%. That means no more retirement income, no more craft dinner, but rather like a, like a can of tuna every two days. So of course, if you follow me, you already know that I focus on lower yield, higher growth companies, companies with a strong dividend triangle. But before I get into my portfolio, let me ask you this. If you're about to retire tomorrow morning, would you prefer to invest in a company like Transcontinental with weak revenue growth, declining earnings and no more dividend increase for the past few years? Well, when you look at this business without even knowing what's their business model, you know that if management cannot turn this around, well, TCL will eventually have to cut their dividend if they continue that route, right? So not necessarily a great retirement con candidate for your portfolio. On the other side, I rather invest with companies with yes, a lower yield, but a lot more promising future. Companies like Dolorama with constantly increasing their revenue, maintaining their margins so their earnings grow accordingly, and of course, the dividend follows. But here we go back to that question again, saying, but Mike, how are you going to retire on a 2% yield portfolio? That doesn't make any sense. I got it. So I'm going to show you how I would build a portfolio, and then we're going to discuss the withdrawal sequence. So what you see here is my DSR Pro dashboard for a million dollar portfolio. I know you're going to tell me the balance is 902 right now, but we're going to get there in a second. First, I just want to highlight some stuff. The first thing is I went for a 100% equity portfolio. Why? Because I want to maximize my return. I don't mind about the volatility. And of course, that's not financial advice. That's just the way I invest. I've been invested in the market 100% of the time since 2003. The second thing is I decided to keep up with the same level of US and Canadian exposure, which is roughly 50-50. Then for the stock selection, I went for only companies with a very solid dividend triangle. So only companies showing constant revenue growth, constant earnings per share growth, and of course, 
constant dividend growth. So as you can see here, the dividend yield is about 2%. The dividend growth rate over the past five years is almost 10%. And I am well invested across many sectors. So the highest sectors in this portfolio is 17% with industrials and financials with a small exposure to real estate and energy. But that's pretty much just the way I wanted to build a portfolio according to my preferences in terms of sectors and in terms of stock selection. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm not going to review the 30 companies that I invested in. I just want to show you that I've selected 30 stocks and they will be all be mentioned in the comments below. Each of them would be at roughly $30,000. So on top of making sure that I'm well diversified across sectors, I also made sure that I'm well diversified in terms of dividend income source. So as you can see on this graph, the largest position that I have would be Brookfield Renewable paying me about 8% of the total income that I need. So again, if I suffer from a dividend cut, it will be less than 8% of my income that will be put at risk. So here we are at a stage that I invested $900,000 from my million, but I'm only generating $18,000 in income per year, even though it grows by 10%. If I have to retire tomorrow morning, that doesn't make sense to generate that $50,000 I need, right? So before I explain you how I'm going to address the withdrawal sequence and making sure I don't sell during a bear market, because that's a big problem, I would like to invite you to download the Dividend Income for Life guide. That guide is a free workbook that will explain you my investing strategy, my philosophy, and also why investing in high yielding stocks at retirement is a lot riskier than investing in low yield, high growth stock. In that guide, you will also learn how to build your portfolio and select those low yield, high growth stocks to make sure that you have a healthy portfolio that grows its dividend and of course, the withdrawal sequence is completely covered in it. So you will know exactly how to build the portfolio and how to start retirement without having to worry about your income. So that's why I called it Dividend Income for Life. You can download the workbook at dividendstocksrock.com slash income or just click in the link description below. So being able to generate income from your portfolio is crucial at retirement, right? This is the whole point of working hard, saving money, investing it, and finally reaping those rewards. So the negative side, if you invest with high yielding investment product is you're likely going to be affected by inflation if there's no distribution increases, and you will also be exposed to a little bit more of dividend cuts. The downside, if you select a low yield, high growth approach is of course, we will go into bear markets from time to time, and you don't want to sell when the, your portfolio is down 10 to 15%. So what's the solution? Let's do some math here. In my example, I invested $900,000. So of course, I still have another $100,000 that I don't know what to do with it, right? Well, I actually know. I will split it in three GICs. So one year, two years, and three years. We commonly call this a GIC ladder. So $33,000 for one year, $33,000 for two years, and $33,000 for three years. So using current GIC rates, they roughly pay about 4% right now. So now my million dollar is fully invested and it generates $22,000 in income. So the $18,000 from the dividends plus a few thousand dollars more from the GIC. Well, at 22,000, I'm pretty far away from 50, right? I'm still missing $28,000. So the easy solution is of course to sell shares. Every year, if I would like to protect my, my capital, I would need my $900,000 to actually generate 3.11% return outside of the dividend. So that 28 on 900, that is the 3.1%. That's how much my portfolio needs to grow in a year without the dividend to make sure that I can sell some shares and actually do not touch my capital. So on a good year, meaning a year where my portfolio grows by more than 3%, excluding the dividend, I can sell some shares. I will start by rebalancing my portfolio, change a position, or just equally trim the portfolio to maintain the sector allocation, the dividend diversification, because this is how I want to invest, not for the next year, but rather for the next 30 years. 
So this strategy will work well on many, many, many cases, right? So like, for example, in 2024, I could easily sell for 3% of my portfolio since my portfolio would be up roughly by 10% following the market. But now what happens when we go into a bear market? Well, if we have a bear market, this is where the GIC ladder comes in handy. So I decided to bridge the gap with three years of GIC ladder. The thing is, on year one, if the market goes down, I still get $22,000 of income from the dividend plus the, the interest. And then I have $33,000 that is available for me to cash in. So instead of selling shares on the bad year, I would just take one year of my cash reserve to compensate and still maintain that $50,000 retirement budget that I had. So where's the three years coming from? Well, it's kind of like a pretty solid cushion as most bear market will take on average 18 to 24 months to fully recover. Unfortunately, we do run into big bad markets such as what we had in 2008, where three years later after the peak of the market, so in 2011, the S&P 500 was barely recovering. So if you have that three years cash reserve, you are able to go through pretty much all kind of bear market and market crashes without selling shares at an important loss. So going forward, as we know, what happened after 2011? Well, we had like several years of bull market where it was relatively easy to sell a portion of your shares to retire and maintain your budget. And on top of that, resplendish that GIC ladder slowly but surely. So of course, this solution is not perfect. Maybe you're going to run into a longer mare market. Maybe you're going to have more hurdles. But just think that while the capital gains are not guaranteed, investing in high yielding stocks, the yield is not guaranteed either. So if we are about to enter into a major market crash with an important recession, I still rather have companies that have strong revenue growth, earnings growth, and dividend growth because they do have a robust balance sheet and their chances to go through that recession and survive and thrive is a lot better than investing in a mature and struggling business right now that can barely increase their dividend. So if you want to know more about how to build your portfolio with a low yield, high growth stock approach and have a comparable as well with high yielding stocks that perform very poorly, to be honest, you can download the Dividend Income for Life guide at dividendstocksrock.com slash income. It will also provide you with an example of a portfolio of how I would build it tomorrow morning to generate strong income for life. All right, guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and let me know what you think of this strategy and you, if you think it would be a good thing for your situation. So I'll see you in the comment. And until the next video, don't forget to stay invested.